In this video, we're going to learn about limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. We'll start with an informal definition. We say that the limit as x approaches f infinity of f of x equals l, provided that the values of f of x can be made arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently large. So let's try to estimate the limit as x approaches infinity of radical 9x squared plus 6x minus 3x. And all we're going to do is take larger and larger values of x and substitute that into our expression and see if it gets close to a number. Now looking at this, it may not be clear if this limit even exists, but based on the numerical approximations, it looks like this limit is getting closer and closer to the number one. Now we may also have a limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. So the only difference is that x is getting large in the negative direction. So if I wanted to estimate the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x minus two over radical two x squared minus x minus three. Again, I can put large negative values of x in the expression and evaluate it. And in this case, it's not really clear what number this uh, expression is approaching as x gets large and negative, but it does seem to be getting more and more consistent around negative 0 0.707. We will revisit this example at the end of this video. So our formal definition says that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, provided that if we are given any positive number epsilon, then there is a positive number, capital M, such that whenever x is greater than capital M, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So this is what we mean by saying that the function values get arbitrarily close to l. Now we can actually use this formal definition to prove the following fact, that the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x equals zero. So we'll just start our proof by saying, suppose epsilon is some positive number. What we're gonna do is choose capital M to be the reciprocal of epsilon. So if epsilon is very small, M is very large. Then whenever x is greater than m, if I take reciprocals of both sides of an inequality, I reverse the inequality sign. So one over x would be less than one over epsilon, I mean one over m, and one over m is the same as one over one over epsilon, and that equals epsilon. So we've shown that when x is sufficiently large, one over x is smaller than epsilon. So one over x gets arbitrarily close to zero. And the same is true uh, for the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x, that equals zero. So this fact alone, if we combine it with, uh, our limit laws, squeeze theorem, we can get a tremendous amount of usage 
and be able to evaluate almost all of our limits at infinity using that one simple fact. Uh, limits at infinity are not always finite. We could have an, a limit at infinity being positive infinity or negative infinity as well. So let's look at an example where we use the limit laws to evaluate the uh, limit at infinity of 6x cubed plus 8x squared minus 5 all over 3x cubed minus x squared plus 10. Now, if you remember your algebra, you may be able to uh, say what the answer is right away. But here in our calculus class, we want to make sure that we show all of the important steps when evaluating this limit. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x cubed. Now x cubed, I chose that because x cubed is the uh, dominant term. It has the highest exponent. And why would I want to multiply by 1 over x cubed? Well, because the only limit that we know for a fact is true is that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x equals 0. So I'd like to have expressions with something over x. So after I multiply through by 1 over x cubed, I have either a constant or some number over x or some number over a power of x. And I should be able to use my limit laws with all of those terms. Now, if you were uh, working this out on a quiz or a test, I would expect to see those two steps. The next steps, I'm just going to show them to emphasize that we are using the limit laws. So I would take the limit as x approaches infinity of the top, the limit as x approaches infinity of the bottom. Each one I can break up into three limits, one limit for each term, and then I can evaluate those. Our constants are just going to be constants. I can factor out in the top, I can factor out the 8, and I'll have multiplied times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. And then in the cubed term, I can say that is negative 5 times the quantity limit as x approaches infinity 1 over x cubed. I'm just using our limit laws here. Same type of thing in the bottom. And so then uh, I know that th uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is 0. So most of those terms are going to be 0. And just to emphasize, you don't have to show all of these steps right here. So in the end, the only terms that do not go to 0 are 6 in the top and 3 in the bottom, and 6 over 3 equals 2. So how would I expect to see this written? Uh, I would expect you to use like a little arrow. Arrow implies that it is tending to 0. It doesn't equal 0. It doesn't cancel or go away, it tends to go to zero as x goes to infinity. So use the arrow, and then you can write zero for every term uh, after the arrow, and simplify the expression that way. But I want to caution you. Very important warning coming up. Never, ever try to do arithmetic with infinity. Infinity is not a number. Writing 1 over infinity is utter and complete nonsense. You will be penalized for writing nonsense. You have been warned. So when evaluating some of these limits, we're going to need to use the following important fact from algebra, that the radical of x squared is actually the absolute value of x. 
So if x is positive, the radical of x squared is just x. But think about this. If x is negative, the radical of x squared has to be the opposite of x. Well, why is that? Well, radical always denotes positive square root. So if x is negative, there's no way I could get the answer x because that would say that the radical would be negative. The radical has to be positive. Maybe if we look at an example. If I take negative 4 and square it, I'll get positive 16. And radical 16 is positive 4. But I started with negative 4. And so positive 4 is the opposite of negative 4. So I have to take the opposite to ensure that I'm getting a positive number. So let's practice this and learn an important algebraic technique that will help us. We're going to evaluate the limit as t approaches negative infinity of 2t over radical t squared plus 1. So this next step is really important, and maybe you haven't seen anything like it before. I'm going to do nothing to the numerator, but under the radical, I'm going to factor out t squared from t squared plus 1. What do I get in parentheses then? I'll have 1 plus 1 over t squared. Now let's check this for a minute here. t squared times 1 gives me t squared. t squared times 1 over t squared would be t squared over itself which is just 1. Now you can kind of see why I would want to do that because I know the limit as t goes to negative infinity of 1 over t squared is going to be 0. I still have to deal with this t squared that I factored out. So first thing I'll do is break up that radical expression in the denominator into two radicals. Radical of t squared times the radical of 1 plus 1 over t squared. Now I'm going to use the fact that since t is negative, radical t squared is going to be negative t. Now I have a factor of t in the numerator. I have a factor of negative t in the denominator. I can divide out the t. And what will I get? Let me do this a little bit more carefully. If I divide out the t, that's going to make 1. So I'll have 2 over negative 1. But 1 over t squared goes to 0 as t goes to infinity. So I'm going to be left with 2 over negative 1, and that's how I get negative 2. So now we can use calculus to define what a horizontal asymptote is. We say that the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote, which we will abbreviate as HA, of f of x, provided that either the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals l, or the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals l. We have to check both limits when we're finding horizontal asymptotes. So as an example, let's find all the horizontal asymptotes of f of x equals x minus 2 over radical 2x squared minus x minus 3. 
So remember, we're going to take two limits. We'll start by taking the limit as x approaches positive infinity of this function. Well, our first step is going to be under the radical, we're going to factor out x squared. We will always factor out the highest power of x. And that leaves in parentheses 2 minus 1 over x minus 3 over x squared. The next step will be to break that into two radical expressions. And since x is positive, radical x squared is just x. Now, let's be careful here with the algebra. x is a factor of the denominator. x is not a factor of the numerator. Now, I could factor x out of the numerator like I did with x squared under the radical sign, but it may be simpler to simply multiply by 1 over x on times the numerator, 1 over x times the denominator. In either case, I'll get the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus 2 over x all over radical 2 minus 1 over x minus 3x squared. And so I can see that 2 over x will go to 0. 1 over x goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. And negative 3 over x squared goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. And so I should be left with uh, 1 over radical 2, uh, which is simply root 2 over 2. Now, I said we have to take two limits to find all of the horizontal asymptotes. So now let's take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x minus 2 over 2x squared minus x minus 3. Now the first algebraic steps are going to be the same, so I'm not going to repeat them. I will get two radicals then in the denominator. And then when I evaluate radical x squared, because I'm taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity, x is a negative number, and so I'm going to get negative x rather than just x, which is fine. The rest of my algebra is the same. I'll multiply top and bottom by 1 over x. And so then I'll be left with the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 minus 2 over x over negative radical 2 minus 1 over x minus 3 over x squared. So again, the 2 over x will be going to 0. 1 over x goes to 0, 3 over x squared approaches 0, and I'm just left with negative 1 over radical 2, which is negative root 2 over 2. So now we have a graph that has two horizontal asymptotes. As you go to positive infinity, the line y equals radical 2 over 2, is a horizontal asymptote. And as you go to negative infinity, the different line y equals negative root 2 over 2 uh, is also a horizontal asymptote. And you may recognize this function. That was the function that we used when we were first learning about the limit as x approaches negative infinity. We just tried to evaluate that numerically. And now we can see that this limit, we have shown that this limit actually equals negative root 2 over 2, which is very close to the values that we got by just substituting numbers in.